Hi, I'm Dave, owner and lead engineer of Voigtsmith Innovation. Today we're going to be talking about the, uh, the benefits of, of our liquid de-icing systems. As you know, Voigtsmith Innovation, um, we manufacture the highest quality liquid de-icing and uh, hydro seeding equipment on the market. And today we're going to run through those features for you. The first thing that you're going to notice um, is that all of our plumbing is standardized between all of our units. So that means this power bundle here, um, as we call it, which is mounted to a 305 tank in this instance, is the same whether it's by itself as the bundle, um, 305, 500, all the way through 1,000. So if you do decide to purchase from us, the, uh, the maintenance and plumbing configurations are all the same on all of your units, which makes training very easy. Implement, implementation of the, the liquid process also very easy. We can talk about the, the powder coating of our skids. We go a tremendous uh, length to make sure that the quality is there and that we have the best corrosion resistance that we can because we know that we, we operate in a very harsh environment when it comes to liquid de-icing. So all of our skids are first fully welded. That means that there's no welds exposed to, for any rust to start seeping out and uh, getting underneath the powder coating. Once they are welded, they're, they're ground down, sent to, to get media blasted, which is to roughen up the surface and help the, the powder coat adhere. After they're media blasted, they're then acid washed, which removes all the oil and uh, prepares the base for the epoxy primer, which is a self-healing primer that um, basically ensures that we don't get the flaking if any uh, chips are, occur in the powder coating. After the epoxy primer is done, we, uh, we powder coat the, the top with the high quality DuPont powder coating. Um, this is actually a, a fairly expensive process uh, compared to conventional powder coating where it'd just be blasting and then putting a coat of powder coat on. But we, we do want um, to ensure that we have a, a long lasting finish for you guys that your equipment can last. The finish can last as long as the equipment does. You probably have heard that we are an end user manufacturer, which means that we rely on our equipment in the field to, to get the job done when there's a time crunch. And that means we cannot afford downtime. All of our designs reflect that in the fact that we use the highest quality parts um, available on the market. We will not skimp out on any connection points or cheaper parts just to do the job that uh, would save us a couple dollars. You'll see that everything is flange uh, fittings for, for all the connection points. These are actually stronger than threaded fittings because they have a lot more area uh, to distribute any pressure versus the threads that are, that are holding the pressure. The biggest thing for me though is that the maintenance, if there are any issues with these systems, is incredibly easy versus threaded parts. If you need to take off any of these parts in the field or even in your shop, it is a 5 16 um, socket or even you know a regular screwdriver will get the job done. This means that you can literally pull any part out of the system um, if you need to without having to go through the process of threading and unthreading to get to the, to the systems. They're also very easy to reassemble. There's just a gasket inside. Uh, the clamps are all stainless steel. We actually upgraded the clamps to a, to a heavier band over the conventional banjo ones that we were running. This uh, ensures that we get a little more strength out of them. We were seeing a couple issues with them breaking in the past. Um, now with upgrading to the 916 clamp here, we, uh, we have not seen any of those issues. All of our systems are GPS rate controlled, which um, means that you will input an application rate per acre, whether it's 50, 100, um, honestly as high as you want to go. And then the system is going to adjust the flow rate to the boom based upon your speed. So that you are always putting down the correct application rate per acre regardless of speed. Now, the biggest thing that comes with that is the electronics. These are the heart of the system right here. Cheap electronics will lead to poor performance. We, uh, we spend a tremendous amount of money on the electronic systems themselves. The main components of this would be the flow meter and the servo valve. The flow meter is obviously monitoring the flow. The servo valve is what controls the flow to the boom once it gets a reading from the flow meter and, and the GPS receiver. We run magnetic flow meters. Um, this is a, a, a vast upgrade over the conventional turbine flow meters that most of our, or all of our competitors do run. And the problem with turbine flow meters is that they rely on a mechanical turbine inside them to count revolutions based upon flow going through the system. The problem with that is there's a bearing inside of them and we know that salt brine is abrasive. Once that salt brine uh, runs through the system and wears that bearing down, we can see different revolutions from that turbine, thus throwing off our, our flow meter reading in the cab uh, at the controller. Another big problem with turbine flow meters is that they 
need to be calibrated for density changes. So they come out of the box calibrated for water. While we know that salt brine is more dense than water, we know that salt brine blended with a mag or a calcium product is more dense than salt brine itself. So basically what that means is that for every mixture or ratio or any product that you're running, you need to um, calibrate that flow meter again. This is actually really difficult to do. You have to do dry runs, tests like that. Basically it's impossible, we've tried. So that flow meter density um, change will throw off your numbers by a tremendous amount, uh, which is going to either cause your system to under or over apply. And uh, that is both, uh, that is a negative on both sides. Either we're wasting money or we're getting very poor results. The magnetic flow meters do not care about density change. This is a, this is a huge plus. They will run anything from, you know, a specific, specific gravity of one like water all the way up to our, you know, heavy liquid nitrogens if we are running that application in these sprayers. But that's good for your mag and calcium chlorides in their straight form. They're also open flow. That is a huge benefit to us because we can get quite a bit more flow through the systems without that restriction, uh, which more flow obviously means higher spray speeds and higher at higher application rates, which it would be uh, an example of a post-treatment situation um, with heavy snowpack running a heavy, uh, high application rate. The next part in line of the electronics would be the servo valve. We have run several servos in the past. This year we have upgraded to what is called um, an exponential ball valve. So basically with every slight turn of the, the valve inside there, we are getting an exponentially more flow. This is different from the conventional butterfly valves where we used to run before, which would basically just be a gate inside that would open and close. Um, we have seen a tremendous performance increase from, the, from these new servos. It's purely based upon the fact of much more steady flow. We're not bouncing around anymore. They're also much stronger in construction versus the conventional butterfly valves. The butterfly valves were fighting a lot of resistance, so they tended to shell gears out of them. Um, some would last for quite a while, some would last for two or three times out. So we eliminated that potential for downtime with this new servo. Again, more expensive, more of an investment, but tremendous more quality um, and reliability. Those two are the, the main components of electronics, but we also can't forget the, the valves that we use to control the, the boom sections themselves. We run the T-Jet one inch manifold valves. Um, they are tied to an inch and a half manifold, which allows us to make sure that we have even flow uh, on every boom section. We have been running these valves for nine years. Um, there's a lot of new valves on the market. Uh, we have tested, but we have never had any issues with these, so we're sticking with those. Those have been the same that we've been running for, for all of our, our models down the line. Once we look at our wiring on the systems, we go a long ways to make sure that we can eliminate all the corrosion um, spots and, and potential for that issue. We run the weatherproof boxes. Those were new last year. We upgraded them again this year, um, all bulkhead connections on them. The new ones have some fuse locations outside the box just so you don't have to worry about pulling the cover off to access fuses. One big issue we're having on the old models was we had the battery tucked back. Um, you know that batteries and cold never go together. So we moved the battery location up front this year, uh, it's been a really good improvement because it's right there for us to access. Easy if we have to jump start it, something like that. One also big improvement this year with the power bundles is we actually dropped the stands down by five inches. We reconfigured the plumbing. It still does the same thing. We can self fill, we can pump out, um, we can agitate in the, in the tank if we have to. But by reconfiguring the plumbing, we were able, like I said, to drop this down, which has helped a lot in visibility. We also added a tremendous amount of strength to the stand itself versus the one inch tubing that we were running last year. Um, we didn't have any problems really with it, but we still don't like to see things shaking around, especially in the cold. The guns we run for the hose reels, um, all stainless steel internals. We run a pretty large orifice on them, which is a um, a nice feature because when we're spraying sidewalks, we don't want to have to be walking really slowly, but we also don't want to be over applying. So we have a good flow, um, about six gallons per minute at that, at the gun. Everything we run, obviously electric rewind hose reels. Um, we run a 300 PSI hose, spray hose, just like you see, abrasive, um, resistant. So as you're dragging across parking lots and sidewalks, we don't have any issues with wear and tear there. 
that's about it, covering everything that the, the units are about in a nutshell. Um, obviously, like I said, we do invest a tremendous amount of money in them to ensure that they are the highest quality for you. You will be hard pressed to find a better um, equipped sprayer on the market for the price. If you guys do have any questions, please reach out to our sales staff, staff whether by emailing or uh, um, shooting us a phone call. If you have any questions, you can definitely comment in the videos. We'll get back to you.